In this week's episode, I'm talking to Dean Costa from the USA about how he got into sourcing, his new book, and what he will be speaking about at SourceCon Atlanta. Welcome to episode 31 of the Sourcing Challenge Show. I'm your host, Mark Lundgren. Dean is one of the people in our community that most people mention as somebody they learned from. So I was very interested in getting his story. Enjoy this episode. We always hear about your tools and very rarely does people ask you anything past that. Um, so I like, I've heard snippets, but I knew, I know you did some, you know, you did some air straining, you like in the beginning, but I never really got the story of like coming out of the military. How did you get into sourcing? It's really kind of funny because in my book, there's only about, I have the 151 pages, maybe only seven pages I have tools in it. Everything else is either exactly. process procedures I've created or, or done things with or Boolean strings or buzzwords that I've just, you know, it's really kind of funny. And, you know, I don't know how the whole tool thing act with me actually came into being. I think I recall several years ago, Chrome extensions were starting to be a big thing. Yeah. And it didn't seem like anybody was really paying a lot of attention to them. Um, they were mentioning them, but not really focusing on them. So I said, okay, let's find out what this is all about. Uh, and I went in and just started playing with all of them. I mean, I probably got between the eight Google-based browsers I have, I probably have almost 5,000 extensions. Yeah. Um, and um, and that's not even counting the OSINT um, um, Biscato browser, which is a well environment, which has two OSINT-based versions of Firefox and Chrome in it, which is mm -hmm. nothing but OSINT, open source intelligence. Yeah for those that don't know, uh, stuff in it. So, I mean, um, and somehow that just became my shtick, which is really odd because up until then, I was most known for the processes and procedures I created that allowed me to uh, set a, what is still a record at Microsoft of 112 hires in a year as a full cycle recruiter and manage 100 open recs at a time. Yeah. Um, and, and then all of a sudden it morphed into this and it's really strange because that's not all I do. I mean, yeah, I know the Chrome extensions. I know the tools I program. I've created tools. Uh, Hewlett Packard's still using a Boolean builder I created years mm -hmm. and years ago. Um, but it, it is what it is, and that's fine. And it's really interesting for me is because I'm watching others kind of take up that mantra as well, like Greg Hawks and um, Jonathan Kidder, you know. And, you know, at first you look at it like, oh, gee, thanks. That's my chick. But then you're like, well – you know, they say that um, imitation is the most serious form of flattery. And Greg and Jonathan are great people, and Greg and I are really good friends. He yeah. mentioned it a lot in his post, and so I don't, I don't, you know, it's just one of them things. You're like, now wait a minute, and then you're like, well, yeah, it's, I can't do everything, and there's got to be others, and those are two really great people to be focusing on it. And, and everybody like has a different angle on it as well. Like, you know, they they'll look at things differently than you are. Oh, yeah, definitely. They'll look at things differently than me. Uh, they tend to, both of them tend to like to go more in detail than me. Mm. I tend to be like, here's a tool, here's what it does, here's where I think it fits, have a nice day. And the reason I do it that way is because I want people to think for themselves. Yeah. I don't want them to say, well, Dean said I should use it like this. <laughs> no, just here's what it is, go play with it. You decide if if you want to use it and where it fits in the sourcing life cycle and how to use it. Um you know, I, I don't like to do that with new tools. Now, once they've been around for a while, like if yeah. someone sits there and says, Dean, what's your, you have the sourcing lifestyle, what are your, what, what, what are your tool, your, your main tools that you like to use throughout the cycle? I mean, I have an eight tool combo that's right now my favorite boom, boom, boom. Yeah. Um, that I use. Um, and then there are what I call um, helper tools that can help me when, they're one-offs. Most of these tools are for mass workings. Like I have a list of 100 people, scrape it. But once I get down to where, okay, I get out of the 100, I got 90 enhancements. I need 10. Those I have to do manually. There are other, well, not manually, but yeah, one by one. There are other tools I like to use. So it's kind of like these are the main tools and these are the helper tools that go when I need to use them, which like right now I'm scraping. I won't mention the site I'm scraping because I don't want to get into trouble. <laughs> uh, but I'm scraping it for my company and yeah. uh, there's 242 people I'm scraping. And once I do that, then I'll use tools to enhance and get emails and whatever it doesn't find, I'll have to do manually one by one by one by one by one, yeah. which is fine. 
uh, they'll add 242, they'll probably be 12. I'll have to find manually. <laughs> But but the big thing, and it's it's interesting because like I'm going down to speak at the uh, Portland's uh, SourceCon group cool. on the fifth, and I've already had somebody who knows I'm coming ask me a question about the tools, and they're like, okay, so is there anything I need to do prior to to be prepared to use all these tools? I go, yeah, learn how to do it without the tools. And they're <laughs> yeah. like, what do you mean? I go, tools come and go. Yeah. Back in the day, Connectifier was the social aggregating tool there was it may have been the closest thing to the one tool that could do it all yeah as far as social aggregating meaning you didn't need it anymore it worked 90 percent of the time everywhere well it went away bought by the big brother we'll just leave it at big brother <laughs> we all know who that is i hope and if you don't the letters are l to l i um and now it's back but it doesn't work worth the crap no um and so as a result People are like, oh, my God, what do I do? And I'm like, that's why, one, you need to learn to do it without the tools. And yeah. number two, you always have backup tools. That's why my list of top tools has got several tools in each category because if one goes away, the others are there. And to be honest, it's very rare you find one tool that does it. Okay, so I digress. So back when I was in the military, um, Persian Gulf War happened, and that was my first war, third time where – I was having people fire bullets at me. Yeah. But they didn't call the first two wars. They were altercations. <laughs> I've always had a problem with that. I used to tell my colonel, I said, mm. you know, I got a problem with that. I have this theory. If, if someone's trying to kill me, it's a freaking war. But, you know, that, that and that always made him laugh because he felt the same way. But, you know, <laughs> the government. Yeah. Um, and so I got out. Well, we got. I came back from Germany because I was stationed in Germany at the time. So that was okay. 92. 293 mm -hmm. and i ended up getting out in 95 and a few months before i got out um i was going to an organization that was supposed to help military people get out but they weren't yeah. doing a very good job so i started helping and working with them on it and uh, that i got my first taste of recruiting although i don't it, it, call it recruiting so much as yeah. marketing because i would find people help them write a resume and then push the resume out to companies i knew hiring for what they did yeah. So I got out of the military and I came up to Washington State. Um, you know, I would have gone for, you know, long story, but uh, my family's in New York and mm. Washington was about as far away from there as I could <laughs> Hawaii was a bit too expensive. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Um, so, and, and my wife's family was here. So that okay. was good. Um, and then uh, I, you know, did what you did back then, uh, put out resumes uh, because back then, there was no Facebook. LinkedIn wasn't around. Uh, it was old school. Got a few calls. The typical, um, we're just talking to you to check a box because you're military. We have to say we talked to a military yeah. person. and Trying to denigrate all the stuff we learned in military. Hey, it's great. You learned all that, but none of it's worth a crap out here in the real world. <laughs> Whatever. Um, finally found somebody who hired me um, who, who wanted somebody in the military to be a recruiter. Yeah. Um, so they hired me, threw me on a desk and said go and i'm like do what <laughs> uh didn't get any training but luckily being ex-military the mentality that we had allowed me to succeed get on with it and figure it out yeah yeah and then eventually several years later i did get errors training which by that point was was kind of anticlimactic because they did wasn't anything that really earth shattered to me at that point um you know and so then my career, you know, I did the, that was contract recruiting. Then I did the consulting thing. And then I got my first permanent corporate role was at Microsoft. Mm -hmm. And then eventually I ended up where, you know, where I'm doing what I do now. Yeah. Um, back in the day, you know, before the Facebook, still LinkedIn's all that Munster was a big deal. Yeah. Um, and you did a lot of geo based and phone recruiting. Um, Boolean and stuff like that, but the internet was still a growing thing, um, you know. And then eventually, the internet and all that came up to being, um, which is really, really, really co cool. It's made life really easy if you know how to use it. Um, yeah. I I have an HR degree, and I've got a few others, but we won't go into all that. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so that's about it. That's kind of how I got to where I am now. Yeah. Um, 
So like, talk to me about like your uh, your kind of still a year in Microsoft. Like some of the yeah, doing a hundred and what was it, a hundred and twenty developers. 112, I didn't say developers, hires. Okay, hires, but, you know, a lot most of them, of, yeah, most, most of them being most, in kind of... Most were either developers, architects, some program managers, few testers, but not a nor, uh, uh, not senior borderline SC yeah. testing architect type people. I didn't mess with a whole lot. Of, and I was in the security business unit, so I was dealing oh, with wow. security um, yeah. at the time, which was a very tough market at that time. Um, so we were talking, um, you know, a lot of the K um, crypto stuff, KPIs, um, trying to remember everything. It's been so long. <laughs> the, uh, you know, the fingerprinting yeah. and all that stuff. Um, that's where the majority of my, of that year was there. Um, and, and basically all it really was with security business unit had existed for a while, but at Microsoft, the idea was to get to 102% of NTA, which is basically your number. So if your number that you needed in your group was 100, they wanted you to have about 101, 102. They wanted you to be slightly over. The problem is they could never get beyond about 82%. Mm. And um, my manager um, put me there and said, you know, Dean, go and figure it out. Take, do what it got to be done. Because I was military, he figured I would just Get and I did. I, I went in, I talked to a bunch of people, I observed, I talked to the director and said, here's what I see is going on. Here's what I think we need to do to fix it. But I can tell you right now, if I go, you got to, you got to have my back and say, this is, we're going to try what he's saying. Because yeah. if you don't, it's never going to work. Um, and he agreed. And so I took, got everybody together and I said, okay, here's the problems as it stands right now. Number one, y'all are all fighting for the same people. <laughs> and there is no method to your madness. Some of your projects are higher priority than other, but yet you still fight. It makes no sense. So here's what we're going to do. We have PMs, we have testers, we have developers, we have architects. Y'all are going to pick one person from each group for each to be the point person for each category and you're going to rotate every month yeah. so that means this group's going to have one for each group this group this group and your guys are going to rotate the director will set the priority for the positions i will supply people you will that i've talked to that i think are good the ones you like you will text screen once you've text screen them if you like them we bring them in there will be somebody from each group on the loop if everybody says it's higher or most of you all say higher we will hire them the best the most high priority rec gets them first done over we're not playing any games they him hard blah blah, blah 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 i go <laughs> you can do that if you'd like the director is right here and i pretty sure he's gonna say we're gonna do it and he did and we did um, I even set up times where I was available to source with hiring managers. Yeah. So that they could see how hard it is. Because some of them seem to think I could walk down to the curb and pick <laughs> the guy with the sign saying, we'll work for food, and that you, could be a developer. You have a folder back, somewhere, right? Where it's just, yeah, like, they're yeah, just all waiting. My little black hat. Yeah. <laughs> um, and, and some of them seem to think that, hey, it's Microsoft. Of course they want to work here. No, there's some people that hate Microsoft too. I mean, you have heard of Apple, remember? Um, Google can keep going if you'd like. Um, at any rate, so within the first two months, we went from 84% of NT to 92%. Mm. And then by the end of the next month, we were at 101 point something percent. Um, at that point, it was done. They were all bought. And from that point on, that's the way we did it. They yeah. were happy as heck. And anybody knew that came in, that it was it. Um, it was really cool because recruiting was a separate entity. Yeah. They actually got me an office in their building. They actually, they actually invited me to all their events. They actually had me down on their org chart. And it was funny is my last year with them, and when it came time for bonuses, I gave up part of my bonus so other people could get bonuses yeah. because I felt it was fair because I had gotten big bonuses a couple of years in a row. I'm like, you know what? Other people are doing really well too. Let's get take care of them. And – they heard about it, and I ended up, when I got my bonus, I'm like, wait a minute, this is like even more than what you tried to give me. And I told you to take, you know, originally it was supposed to be, I think they wanted to give me 5%. And I said, no, give me like 2%, give 3% out to other people. And next thing I know, I'm getting a 7 or 8%. I'm like, <laughs> where's all this coming from? And he's like, security business unit just gave up money for your bonus specifically. Yeah. And I'm like, pardon me? And I'm like, wow, that's pretty cool. I wonder how often that happens. And he's like, I checked. It's never happened. <laughs> no, exactly. I go, cool. Um, I, got, I won two gold stars while I was there, which is 
next to at that time was unheard of for an a HR person to win two of them. Yeah. Um, so that was pretty cool. Um, but that's how all that happened. Um, and then I did a bunch of different stuff. Eventually I left, um, twist, turned different organizations, different companies, and eventually ended up where I'm at now, which I'm yeah. ecstatic with. Um, and I'm ecstatic with what I'm doing. Uh, and you got a cool team there as well. And you're working very much on a, you get that kind of room to work on strategic things. And it's like, how do we actually make the processes for this better? I get, I'm lucky. I'm involved in a lot of different things. Yeah. And, you know, my company's got some rules, so I have to be careful what I say here. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, I get to impact the tools we bring in. Mm -hmm. um, I get to impact events that we do. What I do, I don't own Rex. I don't work on specific skills. I don't do anything. I basically... We got an event here. We need to invite people. Dean, find people with these skills in this area. Boom. Yeah, we Dean, we heard these people are doing layoffs. Can you figure out? Can you get us a list of people in this geo that fit the different skills we're looking for? Boom. Here you go. Mm -hmm. Dean, we got this. Here you go. Boom. I mean, that's basically what I do. I, yeah. I kind of supply lists and, 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 um, bodies to fill needs other people run with it yeah and you know it's interesting a lot of people think well how big of an impact can you really make doing that and you know you got to think about it in terms of an roi so if i am a full if i'm a normal sourcer means i'm going to screen 20 to 30 people a week more than likely that's 20 to 30 hours a week out of my life mm-hmm if you figure a half an hour per screen, so maybe it's 15 hours of my life. Yeah, right. still, but you still, still prepare got, something. Still got, yeah, I still got to prepare and all that. So it's probably more like 20 hours out of my and life. And write the notes and, you know, put them in yeah. whatever system they need to be put in. So then yeah. add in all the plethora of meetings that I have to go through. <laughs> now you're down, you're down to where I have 10 hours left in my yeah. life. How much sourcing can you really yeah. do in 10 hours? Then you're just a recruiter with a different title because you end up using as little time on actual sourcing as recruiters do. And in the end, that's pretty much what it is. Yeah. Um, okay, so let's take a step back for a minute. Now you pay, let's arguably say you pay somebody in that role $50 an hour. Let's just say that. Mm -hmm. The recruiter is going to be there no matter what. So it's irrelevant how much you pay them. Yeah. Okay, so if we say you're paying this person $50 an hour, and let's say they're able to source 50 people a week. Let's see, 10 hours, 50 people. So that's probably not very good. Let's go with 100 people. Let's say 100 people. It's probably not 10 hours. It's probably less because there's other crap that happens. Along this <laughs> but let's say they manage to source 50 people. You're doing 30 screens a week. Okay, put that over here for a minute. Now let's say you hire someone to do nothing but screen. That's all they got to do. Yeah. That person now has 30 to 32 hours a week to do screens. The eight hours of miscellaneous bullcrap. Okay, stop that for a minute. Out of that 32 hours, half hour screen, 64 screens. So you've already doubled the screens. Yeah. That researcher, the role I'm in, is able to find 100 people or more a day for multiple roles. Yeah. So let's see, you've doubled the number of screens one person's doing. You've multiplied the number of candidates that you can find by 80 five. by yeah. no, well, no, it's five more than five. We, yeah. we went 50 to 500, so we've yeah. multiplied it by 10. So 10, I mean, the, the, it's just mind-boggling the efficiency. Now, let's look at the cost. That's 50 an hour. This is a... 100 an hour, you got two people doing it, let's just say. But here's the difference. You've got, what the vetting-wise, you got one person to one person, but this person's vetting twice as many people. Yeah. But this sourcer is able to support as many as eight vetters. So now yeah. you see how the RI totally whips around and changes. Uh, last year, I had my name attached to a lot of hires. I don't want to mention the number because I don't want people. No, to no, quite a lot. Yeah, but you would have. I, let me put it this way: the 112 number, I blew it away by a factor of five plus. So that's the way this model can work. I call it a try model. Yeah, I worked on it once before in Hewlett Packard. It worked fantastic, and it just allows me to support more people. And if you don't want to have a vetter, 
you can still have a recruiter, but what you do with then, if you want to do a die model, but still have it as a researcher and a recruiter doing the vetting, that's fine. What you do then is take the responsibility for the interview, running of the interview off of the recruiter's hands yeah. and attach it to the hiring manager or his designated representative. Because reality is this. You have a better chance of hiring that person if the hiring manager is more involved anyway. So what's the difference? No, it's always what we have. Like I've been in source of roles where, you know, we do the first screening, but then you end up well, always when the recruiter doesn't have that ownership, which is why we push that screening to the recruiter. So they have the ownership that they can actually take them through the process. So I agree, like put that onus on the manager um, saying like, if this is somebody you want to run with, then you run with it. We like right. the admin is just admin. Um, right. let, let us do what we're good at doing. Exactly. And so I think the try model or a modified by model works mm. best. Like right now in my model, when you look at the, I mean, we, when you look at the number of people that I find mm -hmm. and the number of people that I bring in and number of people I get interviewed and all that stuff, I, how you, how yeah, yeah. you wouldn't try it is beyond me. And if you don't want to try it as a pure model, then what you could still do is say, okay, we have 10 recruiters. We're going to get eight vetter slash sourcers to support mm -hmm. them. But we're going to get two researchers to support them. Yeah. And so what you'll end up finding is – any roles that are big, where you have like 10 of them, the research is involved. Yeah. But you still have those sourcers to do the one-offs, where we only need one of them. You really don't want me wasting my time for one hire. <laughs> you want me max where I can impact it the most. And that model works really well as well. Tell me uh, about your book. How did that come about, Dean? What happened was uh, I've been wanting to write a book. And the question was what, where, when, how, and why. Yeah. Um, and so... I was talking to um, Jim Stroud, mm -hmm. and he's like, you know, Dean, I watch Facebook a lot and, and everything, and a lot of people always ask for some of your older blog posts, mm -hmm. uh, diversity hiring, your methodologies you used, and all that good stuff. Why don't you put together some of your old blog posts, maybe add in some newer stuff for tools, and create a book? And I'm like, yeah, but I don't want to have a big 300-page book like some of these people because I think it's just too big. There's so much freaking information. It's overload. And, and, and I have. I probably have 15 recruiting books, Yeah. some of which I, I mentioned in because I help, there's things in there that actually came from me. Some I mentioned in there for other reasons. Some I'm not. Um, but, you know, so I have a boatload of them and uh, both uh, hard and soft copies. So I said, you know what? That's not a bad idea. And then this was almost two years ago. And then finally, about <laughs> three or four months ago, I said, you know what? It's time to do it. Yeah. Um, so I started getting all my bot posts, categorizing, remember that, that, make sure my tool, my top tools list was updated, all that. And then I'm like, okay, I got this. Now the question is, do I wow. use a publisher? Do I self-publish? <laughs> If I self-publish, somebody's got to edit it because <laughs> I speak a few languages, so therefore my English ain't the best in the world, especially writing. I will literally be writing and forget if the noun comes for the verb or the verb comes for the noun. <laughs> my mind's seeing, okay, in German it's this way, in English yeah. it's this way, in Korean it's this way, in Japanese it's this way, in Portuguese you know, it's like, oh. So Derek had just done his uh, poetry book. Yeah. And Derek's, Derek's like one of my best friends in the world. Him, Levy, um, Steve Levy and Pete Radliff. And I'm sure you've seen this when we're, when we're at SourceCon, we're like always together. Not you pack. find one of us, you're always going to find the other three. <laughs> it's just the way it is. No, I think um, somebody called us the, um, the, the four sourcing old guys or some, something like that. <laughs> then somebody tried to call us the source cateers. I was like, that's just really, really lame as heck. So let's not go with that. <laughs> I like that one. Uh, somebody else said the Mount Rushmore sorcerers, and I'm like, yeah, oh, no, okay. thank, not there. But thank you. <laughs> the thing about us is we don't have that kind of ego. None of us. No. Um, we're just three, four guys, been around for a while. We've done it, and we love helping people. But we don't, by any stretch of the imagination, consider ourselves anything special. Mm. And, um, I asked Derek. Derek, hey, dude, I want to do this. Can you do the editing? Mm. And he said, sure. And I go, okay, now what about publishing? What do I do with that? Because he goes, what are you trying to do, Dean? And I go, I just want to get the book out and help people. I'm not looking to make a million dollars. I don't give a flip about all that. I just want to get it out there. And so 
he said, well, why don't you self-publish? That's what I did with my book. And I go, what do you mean? And he showed me. I go, okay, great. Let's do that. And so he did it. We went back and forth a little bit, made a couple little changes to what he did. Uh, but I loved everything. Yeah. And then he helped me upload into Amazon. There's a couple. There's a one misspelled word. There's a no table of contents, which so far only one person gave a crap about. <laughs> I don't want to mention any names. Animal. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm on his show next week, so I probably going to get that. And I said, "Animal, it's 151 freaking pages. I didn't want a table of contents. You know why? A table of contents is basically saying, don't read the whole thing. Just pick where you want to read. Exactly. Start I want, here. I want people to read everything, and then they can mark the things that they want to go back to. So that's how the book happened, and it came into. And um, you know, I'll be honest. I, I went into thinking, you know what? If it sells five copies, I'll be ecstatic. We didn't price it a lot. Literally, I think if I don't even remember how much it is, but it's fourteen bucks, I think. No, it wasn't. Yeah, it wasn't a lot. It's not much. No. And I don't make a lot off it because I wasn't looking to. Um, I just wanted. I just needed to make the price enough to cover cost. Yeah. Um, I was going to split it with Derek, but he said no. Uh, he just having his name on there as an editor he liked, yeah. and which is good. He's coming out with his second uh, book on poetry, which I love. I have his first book, great book of poetry. I read through it. And some of it, I know what he's saying, and I empathize with quite a lot. Yeah. There's some things in our background. You know, you know that piece is behind it, yeah. Yeah, I understand what's behind yeah. it. And though he's doing a second book, he's already run a few of them behind uh, by me, which I love because some of it's really cool. And then after that, um, I'm doing – I'm actually already got another book I plan on doing. But this book isn't going to be for recruiters. This book is going to be for veterans. Mm. Basically, I'm going to write a book about the things you need to do when you get out, yeah. to, stuff you need to get to write a resume, how to write a resume, how to write a cover letter, how to apply, how to interview, what to do after your interview, sending thank you notes and all that, how to handle starting a job, where to post your resume, mm. sites, you know, just a book for veterans. It's probably not going to be long, maybe 90 pages, maybe 100. Yeah, items. no, but just helping them with the things that – Nobody exactly. talks about that's and, all. Yeah. That's all I want to do, and then so that'll be mine, and Derek will edit. And then the next book we're actually going to co-author, and it's going to be a tools book. Mm. I'm going to take my list of top tools at that time, go in depth into each tool, yeah, and then at the end, I'm going to put it all together and show my top tool sourcing methodology or, so, or what that's right. Uh, based on the sourcing life cycle, yeah, I'm gonna, which I hinted at in this book. I hint at it in this book, mm -hmm. and I say this is here and here are tools you can use, but I don't explain how you use these tools. Next one, I'm gonna actually show how to use each tool, which tools, yeah. And by then, some of the tools may have changed. No, but the uh, the general process is just like yeah, that's gonna be another tool that takes the place of a tool that you use today. But what right. you're looking at tool to do is gonna be the same. Yeah. And so, and the big key for me is that I want to, at the beginning, I'm going to make it clear before you go playing with these tools, please learn the basics. In fact, if you look at my list of top tools, the bottom tool is probably the most important tool of all, <laughs> your brain. Yeah. I mean, I'm not joking. It says your brain. No, it's, yeah. it's the most important tool there is um, because all these tools, there's not one tool out there that does something I can't do without the tool, but it might take me 10 minutes and the tool lets me do it in one minute. Yeah. That's nine minutes I save. You know what I can do with nine more minutes in my, in my day? I, you be, In nine more minutes, I can probably find you 50 people for your rec. Yeah. Um, nine p minutes is a lot of time for me uh, or for anybody if they understand how to do it. Um, and then I'm going to probably have a section which I'm going to have to write from scratch. I'm going to have to write most of this from scratch. <laughs> write from scratch. That's why it's the second book out. The third, what's going to be my third book? It's going to take me time. Is trying to a thought two things. One is going to be a mini Reader's Digest PM class because I think it's very important for people to have to, for recruiters, sourcers, and researchers to understand the fundamentals of project management because that's yeah. how you can keep that's how you can manage 100 recs. I managed 100 recs because I had a project management based methodology, and mm -hmm. I it's in this book I just wrote the methodology yeah. in that book. If and so I want to have a mini Reader's Digest version of that, and then I want to have a Reader's Digest version of ideation, which mm -hmm. is basically thinking. Yeah. 
I want people to understand how to think out of the box. So when someone comes and says, Dean, I need to find people that have worked on a farm in Ohio, how in the blue blazes do I do it? It's not like they're on LinkedIn. They'll sit there and say, no, wait a minute, if they are on a farm, that means they have land. If they have land, that means it's in the land bureau of that state and you can go and find that. And if you can find it, it'll list their name, it'll list their where they live and it'll list the name of the farm and it'll probably have a phone number or email. Probably a phone number since they may or may not have email. It's a farm after all. <laughs> and once you get that, you can call them or you can do be even smart and say all these farms are in this area. The only town there is this. It's probably not a big town and it probably only has one bar and that's probably where they go. So geo-based recruiting, go there. Yeah. Uh, and that's actually a story that happened at two source cards ago where somebody actually had that problem. And that's how I solved it. And they were like, I just don't understand how you thought of that. And I'm like, it's, look, it's yeah, look at people I where mean, they are, where do these people hang out? And then you, yeah, you work was, backwards. And, and, and the key to, to the, to what I call recruiting ideation is not thinking like a recruiter, but thinking right. like a candidate yeah. or thinking like a hiring manager. If that's who you're dealing with. You got to think like, the 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 group you're dealing with yeah. not like yourself and so and i say that in this book a lot but i don't really flash it out yeah so yeah. this book next but that third book is going to be a little more um uh, intricate I, it'll probably still be about 150 pages i really liked keeping them under 150 pages for two reasons one because it's not so long and boring <laughs> two two because it makes it so i don't have to it doesn't have to cost a lot. These 300 page books are typically 40, 50 and $60. And that's just yeah. too much. I don't want people that spend that kind of money. No. And especially with our community that's spread all over the world. My book's only on Amazon. There's nowhere else. Because no, exactly. To put it anywhere else. Now it's on Amazon anywhere in the world, yeah, but to yeah. put it anywhere else would have cost more money. Yeah. And that money would have had to get passed on to the people. And I just don't want to do that. You know, uh, I wanted to keep it as cheap as I could do keep it. Yeah. I mean, I'll be honest with you. I've, I have a copy of it right there. I've actually gone in it once in a while because I'd be like, oh, I have to, they want female. I go, okay. What did I do there? Yeah. Some, yeah. No, I'll go back and I go, oh, that's right. It's, that's the name of the sorority because there's a sorority. Yeah. It's yeah. And I'm like, what was the name of that sorority? I know that sorority and that sorority at this college. They always have all the all the developers seem to go to that sorority. I remember that. What's the name of it? Oh, yeah, there it is. You know, because I can't remember everything. No. I'm Lord of Money. Now, granted, I have it soft copy, obviously. Yeah. But it's almost quicker to, to open the book and go, oh, yeah. Yeah, no, whatever. Um, yeah, and I've even marked certain spots in the book just to. You're speaking at this uh, Atlanta SourceCon as well. Yeah, I'm the last one of the last speakers on the last day. I am showing people how to create a recipe and data monitor for scraping. Mm -hmm. But I'm going a little beyond that. What I'm going to do is not just show them how to create a recipe in a data monitor. I'm going to show them how to identify the code that, that identifies yeah. that identifies the. Um, the um, data and it's not it, it, it could be expat could be C, it, it could be different it depends yeah um, and I'm going to show them how to use other tools to identify that mm -hmm. code and that for that and the reason I'm doing that is because you know if data mining goes away most of the other scraping tools you need to be able to do that yeah so if I could sit there and say you see where it says href and what comes after what comes after is exactly the data so that means the identifying code you look for is href or whatever yeah. the heck the, um, there's another word for it. I just don't remember the word, right? Select or whatever. Yeah. So you're looking for that. And then I use F12 where you can see all the code and you can see it. And then there's a few other tools I use. Them. But then there's actually tools like there's a, a Chrome extension, a CSS selector, where it'll find the CSS for you. All you can yeah. do then copy and paste it over um, and other tools. But yeah, so I mentioned those. And then I talk about creating a job, which is basically how you scrape a list and then open each URL to scrape the info behind the list. Oh, great. And because a lot of people don't know how to do that. Yeah. So, and it's not that hard. You create this scrape, then you create the scrape for the profile, and then you do this scrape, upload it, and then you create a job which basically says a long story say, take this information, take this link from that information, open it, and then use this tool to scrape that information. Yeah. And so, what it does, it opens this, scrapes it, closes it, open the next one, close scrape, boom, boom, boom. And you get that's how I do. Yeah. The, 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 the site that will not be mentioned. Um, so I have that. And uh, and there are other scraping tools. I mentioned a few others. And it, it, it kind of depends on what kind of scrape I'm trying to do because truthfully, yeah. I love data miner mainly for unorganized information. Like if I just find a list of speakers and stuff like that. If it's a profile-based thing like Facebook, I actually like Zap Info because mm -hmm. 
they can grab all of those, put it in a nice thing, plus enhance a little bit. And whatever information it doesn't find in Facebook, I can put the Facebook URL in Hire Tool. Yeah. And Hire Tool will in enhance it. And then whatever it doesn't enhance, by then it's found me enough information to stick into Seek Out and it enhances. And usually by then I'm done. And if there's anything beyond that, it's a onesie twosie, which I do manually. Yes. Yeah. Um, and that is kind of part of my eight tool combo. You just, I just mentioned four of the eight tools right there. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm also going to mention in data miner that it does have a right click capability to scrape. Mm -hmm. So you may want to remember that, you know, you may not want to create a recipe, just go to the last profile, highlight it all, right click, and usually it grabs everything. Yeah. But what's funny about it is if you like it, you could save that as a scrape. It'll yeah. automatically save. Not exactly. So there's other ways to do it. Um, so I'm just going to go through all that easily. I think it'll be a cool session. Uh, it's got, Unfortunately, it can't be live. It's got to be static, and I hate static presentations. So if people want to follow you, where can they uh, can they best find all of your um, new things? I have, a, I have a blog on recruiting blogs. Mm -hmm. And then um, my actual website is, and I'm going to, it's the search authority at dot weebly dot com. Mm-hmm. And then, like I said, I do have a recruiting blogs. And actually, if you go to search30.weebly.com, the very front page, you go down, it has a list to literally every place you can find me. Oh, great. It I has my blog that. one, my blog two, my recruiting blogs, my and, branding, and, my slides. And now your, your Amazon author page as well. No, believe it or not, that's not on there because I didn't even know I had one. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know everything about Amazon yet. I don't, I, I, do I have an author it's funny. I know it is because I've actually used it for sources. Yeah, exactly. Never, it didn't dawn on me about my own. <laughs> Just goes to show you can't think of everything. So. No. All right, well, dude. Look, thank you very much. I will yep. see you in Atlanta. Yeah. All right, dude. Later. Sounds good. Thank you very much. Right. Yep. Bye.